I'd heard all about St. Genevieve and how it is Missouri's oldest permanent European settlement, and I had to see it for myself. It's about 250 years old. It was settled by French Canadians around 1735 on the west bank of the Missouri River, and it's about 60 miles south of St. Louis, Missouri. The village of St. Genevieve was originally included in what was known as the Illinois country. And many of the residents actually spoke French. Well, a version of French called Missouri Creole. Jusque dans les années 80, les anciens de Sainte Geneviève parlaient encore français. Aujourd'hui, ils ne sont plus là. Mais c'est en les écoutant que Denis Stromat, musicien et historien de son peuple, a maintenu le flambeau de la mémoire Sa femme et lui sont aujourd'hui les seuls et les derniers francophones du Missouri français. Tout le monde, euh, on a passé tout le monde parlait français. Aujourd'hui, c'est pas comme ça. Il est, euh, est presque à la fin. C'est le problème, parce qu'on continue à jouer, jouer la musique, mais c'est difficile de continuer avec la musique, parce que tu es un, un monde anglais ici dans l'Américain. J'ai appris le, le français avec, euh, avec l'école, <rire> dans l'école, mais euh, ma grand-mère, elle parle le français, mon grand-père aussi, elle parle le français, mais ma mère, elle ne parle pas. Mais elle peut comprendre. Oui, elle peut comprendre. <rire> sa grand-mère, a, elle a aidé avec sa français aussi, parce que moi j'ai la chance de parler avec euh, sa grand-mère et grand-père. Et moi, et moi j'ai un mot qui est de Christian et, euh, et indien aussi, avec, euh, avec la famille de mon père. Euh, donc euh, tous mes ancêtres euh, ont joué le violon aussi. On peut jouer, si tu veux, euh, juste une petite pièce. Euh, des vieilles chansons s'appelle La Guillaume. Mmh. Et c'est une chanson qui d'ailleurs n'existe plus en, en France et elle existe uniquement ici dans ouais. le Missouri et c'est vous qui maintenez cette tradition française ouais. dans le ouais, Missouri ouais. et vous êtes les derniers. Oui, ouais, euh, ça vient, ouais. ça est venu de la France euh, plus de 400 ans passé, mais ça existe toujours ici, mais je t'en dis, ça n'existe pas en, euh, en la France. Bon, je ne connais pas pourquoi, mais... So after the American Revolutionary War, Americans started migrating into the St. Genevieve area from Pennsylvania, Virginia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. The flow increased in the early 19th century. In 1800, France reacquired Louisiana from Spain. And then, in 1803, Napoleon Bonaparte sold it to the United States as part of the Louisiana Purchase. (laughs) 
Much of historic St. Genevieve's charm and ambience are due to the remarkable preservation of the original colonial settlement. Its narrow streets and fenced gardens surround some of the most significant 18th century architecture in the nation. These French colonial style buildings were constructed from massive hand-hewn logs that were set vertically to form the walls. Heavy timbers were mortared and pegged into sturdy trusses that supported the impressive double-hipped roof covering the house and its wide galleries or porches. The oldest surviving buildings of St. Genevieve are described as French Creole colonial, and they were built during the period of Spanish rule in the late 18th century. As we learned in the last video, this is very different from the log cabin style associated with Anglo-American frontier settlements. Well, welcome to the Big Money Speaker Series. We're uh, in uh, June of 2019 already. Started this thing in September of 2011. Have had once lots of fabulous presentations, and we're gonna have another one tonight from uh, Brian Hawkins, who is, uh, I guess, multimedia artist would be the best way to describe him. But Brian got a, a rocket grant to do a uh, movie on the uh, French Creoles and uh, folklore in Missouri. So he's gonna talk to us about that tonight. It's not completed yet, but he's gonna talk to us about his research and maybe show us some of the, what he's got so far. It's all related to the language that was spoken in the late 17th century when people were coming over here. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. The French didn't really go across the Mississippi River to what's now Missouri very often um, until about 1750. It just was considered essentially, you know, unknown territory, and they didn't go except to extract different resources that they needed. So they did go to mine lead, for instance, and, you know, for a few other reasons, or maybe to trade or to hunt. What's left of all of this settlement in what was then the Illinois country today? So if you got in your car and you were driving around and you just wanted to see what's left of, you know, the French Creole settlements, you might encounter something like this if you went at the right time of year. This is La Guione, and it's, uh, I'm going to let Joe Polite, a man that I interviewed in Old Mines, tell you a little bit about it. The gist of, the, of La Guione, I don't know what La Guione means. I, uh, I've seen it broken down into several parts, and, and some, um, some people think it translates into the first day of the year or something like that. But anyway, the whole idea was to have a good time, and the gist of it was they would dress up so that no one re would recognize them, and homemade costumes, of course, and, the, and they would go from home to home on New Year's Eve, and they would sing this song, La Guione, and the, gist, the translation roughly translates to, we're here to sing for you, and... Uh, we're, we're not beggars, but if you would like to share some of your food with us and maybe a little nip of wine, we won't turn you down. We will accept. And, and uh, may we dance with your, your daughter and all this kind of thing, you know, and they just laugh and carry on. And so, uh, Bonsoir le maître et la maîtresse et tout le monde du loge pour le dernier jour de l'année c'est la guionne vous nouvez devez si vous voulez rien nous donner dites nous les on vous demande sous le manque la filane on lui fera fait bon à chair on lui fera chauffer les pieds quand on uh, that's all I can remember. <laughs> and so I was very privileged to, they invited me to go on a guillotine with them. Watch those birds. Oh, I'm a 
I know the song is far from complete as it has survived. It's very episodic. It's got to be, it must have been, must have gone on forever because it's still very long, but it's not connected. It's different parts aren't connected. So people, you know, it's, it got eroded from people's memories over time. But how did it survive? It survived because it was like Halloween has survived because it had a very special feeling to it. It has a particular occasion when it's used, which is also true for Old Lang Syne. And that's just what you do. And it makes you feel like you belong, if you know it. And that's a very important feeling for human beings. And like, like I said, the, it um, definitely morphed in St. Genevieve from having a French meaning to people to just being a symbol of the specialness of St. Genevieve. St. Genevieve is actually named after the patron saint of Paris. And did you know that Saint S-T-E is abbreviated that way because it is a French female saint? I had no idea. I just thought they were being quirky. The stone marker is for the El Camino Royal, and it is the oldest road in the state of Missouri. And it was used by the Spanish, the French, and the Native Americans in the late 1700s. A trail that ran from New Madrid and St. Genevieve to St. Louis. There are several red granite markers along the way that were set up in 1917 by the Missouri Daughters of the American Revolution that marks out the route of the El Camino Real. After the Louisiana Purchase in 1804, many Anglo-Americans as well as German immigrants migrated to the village. Did you know that St. Genevieve has a sister city and its sister city is in Germany? It's Bolsbach, Baden, Germany, and it's located near the Rhine River in the Black Forest region of southwestern Germany. Bolsbach was founded sometime between 749 and 754 AD, and it was previously known as Badelsbach. And over the years, it was adversely affected by the numerous wars and poor economic conditions in the region. And as a result, many townspeople from Germany immigrated to America to St. Genevieve. And that's how it became its sister city. This house was built around 1792 by Jean Baptiste Saint Jem Bova. The historic house overlooks St. Genevieve's communal agricultural fields. The village was primarily an agricultural community. Mainly, the people raised wheat and corn and sometimes tobacco. They produced more wheat than the residents of St. Louis and their grain products were shipped south, which was critical to the survival of the French community in New Orleans. Most of the townspeople lived in lots in town and they farmed land in a common large field. This land was assigned and cultivated in the French style in long, narrow strips that extended back 
from the river to the hills so that each settler would have some waterfront. Only the exterior of the Grand Champ, <laughs> the Grand Champ, the big field, was fenced. But each owner of the land was responsible for fencing his own portion to keep the livestock out. Well, that's it for today. If you liked what you saw, go ahead and subscribe and uh, let me know what you think in the, in the comments below. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.